Um, as Blake said, uh, we're getting into the second half of the afternoon here, and Anna's going to be taking over um, moderator duties, um, except she's also speaker. So um, I have the pleasure of um, introducing her and her segment today to everyone. So just as a reminder, um, this is our Good Vines presentation. So Anna will be going over best practices tools for hop growers. Um, hopefully, if you have not signed into Good Vines already, you will um, at the end of this presentation. And, uh, and uh, just for an intro to Anne, even though I know everybody uh, here knows, um, knows Anne, um, she serves as the Executive Director of Hop Growers of America, Washington Hop Commission, and Hop Growers of Washington. For the past 33 years, she has guided the industry's programs with specific responsibility for science and technical issues. She has also been responsible for the industry's statistical and educational programs, as well as representing the U.S. hop industry at the International Hop Growers Convention. She co-chairs co the IHGC Regulatory Harmonization Commission, one of uh, this international organization's three standing committees. So um, with that, I'll hand it over to Anne. Thank you, Jackie. I'm gonna start my screen share and we will move into a discussion of Hop Growers of America's Good Vines program. So welcome all of you. I think that some of the discussions we've had over the last few days have really created a good opportunity to now have a solid discussion of the Hop Growers of America Good Vines program. And the purpose of this program, which Hop Growers of America started to develop in 2017, is to enhance farm resiliency through education and collaboration. So a little introduction. As we've heard this week, and as I think we're all aware of from activities over the last several years, we do see an increasing focus on best practices, food safety, and sustainability, not only in our in industry, but across all of agriculture. And while much of this is, is customer and consumer driven, we are also seeing government incentive and regulatory programs that are playing a part in the need to, um, just a minute, I'm gonna see if I can get rid of, get rid of this, dang it. Hey Ryan, how do I get rid of the little? How do you do what? Everything looks good. I is the, um, okay, there, it went away. I'm seeing the um, toolbar at the bottom. Is that not showing up for everyone nope. else? No. Nope. Okay, good, good, thank you. Okay, uh, we are seeing more of these government incentive and regulatory programs play a role in pushing agriculture and other industries into more of a focus on best practices. So our Good Vines platform, which is in the USA Hops website member area, does provide educational content and self-assessment tools as a membership benefit for Hop Growers of America members. So the program as a whole is administered by Hop Growers of America. It's governed by, an, by a group of eight voting members that are appointed by the Oregon, Washington, and Idaho Hop Commissions and Hop Growers of America. So these eight growers do represent hop production across the United States. We have additional contributors who have um, specific seats on the committee three each for the merchant processor community and three for the brewer community and then industry experts are also included as, as projects warrant. The current landscape, just as a quick review, I think we all understand the need for additional transparency as customers dem demand insight into farming practices. We have more food safety and sustainability schemes to fulfill and an increase in domestic and international regulations that that our production is subjected to. Let's look a little bit at opportunities. We have a number of newer farms across the US, some of which are very small, and they are looking for ways in which to differentiate their production and, uh, and be successful in the industry. This diverse HGA membership are more traditional larger farms in the Pacific Northwest and the newer farms across the country is a bit of a challenge for HGA to try and develop a program to, to um, meet the needs of this diverse membership. Our commercial and global markets are now available to even the smallest farms. 
So that is something that we're trying to create tools to allow every farm to have the opportunity to participate. Looking at balance issues, we do have market fluctuations leading to shifts in supply and demand. We heard a good discussion of that this morning with some slowdown in the growth curve for craft, uh, global changes in hop and, and beer volume demands. It has brought new expectations on our industry. And we all have seen that farms must be leaner and more competitive to ensure profitability. So what is the Good Binds program? This is a farm focused educational framework built on collaborative development and sharing of economic, social and environmental best practices relative to the US hop industry. The mission statement is enhancing farm resiliency through education and collaboration, fostering an environment where hop growers can develop best practices and promote enhanced farm and industry resilience through these tools. And the vision is to help our farms create long-term success by developing and sharing trusted practices and resources to create lasting positive global impacts. The membership benefits here uh, are the access to the various tools that have been developed for food safety programs and operational risk assessments to enhance our environmental stewardship goals. Again, the program is housed in the member area of our website, which is usahops.org. <clears throat> the principles upon which this program has been developed are primarily education, providing farms with tools to fulfill industry education needs, using industry experts insights to develop those tools and delivering those tools through seminars and learning modules, Col collaboration between growers, merchant processors, and brewers, and working with similar industry programs, and unbiased discussions. The communication tools are, are um, designed to help US hop growers best communicate the best practices that they have implemented and are utilizing through templates, modules, case studies, and other similar tools, and by using web, uh, webinars and online resources to maximize engagement. So this is a look at the Good Binds website. So at, once you've logged into the member area and go into the Good Binds program, this, this is the entry screen that you will see that talks a little bit about what is Good Binds. And as you go on down the page, you can see that we have six topic areas that we currently focus on, food safety and quality, water and irrigation, business management, soil fertility, integrated pest management, and sustainability. We've developed a number of what we refer to as assets or tools that are available within the Good Binds platform. And this, to start discussing those, we'll first talk a little bit about the self-assessment modules, we have three of those, the foundations of food safety, the risk assessment, and the irrigation water microbial testing modules. And then we have some modules that are strictly developed from the standpoint of educational material, and those being the integrated pest management scouting module, the IPM module on resistance management, and a soil fertilization module. As funding and time allow, we continue to develop new modules and add these to the platform. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the self-assessment versus audits or certifications. So this program is designed to be educational and self-assessment. This is not a certification program. It does not involve audits. So what is the difference and which one might be best for your operation? Self-assessment is done by the producer themselves where they review their program, uh, prepare their documentation and basically let their customers know that this is what we have done and, and we pledge that this is correct. A second party audit or a survey might be done by a customer. It might be the merchant company or the, the brewer that would have a checklist or might come out and do an audit. And then you have third party audits. And then these are the full scale independent trained third party auditor who would come out and do an assessment of your operation and um, and that we'll talk a little bit more about that as we move forward. So the first step is to decide which is best for your operation. So again, as I noted, we provide educational tools and self-assessments. 
a self-evaluation of on-farm practices to identify potential food safety hazards and programs that have been implemented and maintained to reduce or eliminate risk to an acceptable level. Assessments and supporting documents must be reviewed annually at a minimum or when any major change occurs. There is no audit by either a customer or an independent third party, but the costs are quite minimal. Basically your $100 a year grower fee if you're uh, not, a, not a member of an association, member of HGA, and the investment of your time. Your second party audits and surveys might be a customer, brewer, or hop merchant, or a program, hold on, just a minute, the fun of working from home, um, might be a customer, your brewer, or hop merchant, or a program like the Sci Platform, or one developed by individual states, such as Hop Grower of Michigan's, Hop Growers of Michigan's Verified Source Program. A second party audit typically provides a checklist or questionnaire for the supplier to complete. Your documents are generated uh, by the Good Buying Self-Assessment by, might be used to provide that verification that you have implemented those basic food safety fundamentals and may suffice certain customer uh, survey requirements. And the costs are minimal, occasionally free. Your third party audits take place annually, generally during the harvest window. Employees are interviewed, activities are observed, and checklists are generally more complex and require numerous supporting documents such as your risk assessments, food safety plan, policies and procedures, and so forth. You are required to show verification and validation of compliance criteria, and the costs are generally high depending on your farm size typically requiring a full-time person to manage these as well as the cost of the audit itself. Some examples here, um, you can see the, the logos down at the bottom, Global Gap, Salmon Safe, the USDA Organic Program. The tools in our Good Binds Foundation of Food Safety module are designed to help you get started on your path to becoming third-party certified should you choose to do so. We tried very hard to make sure that the requirements were consistent with what would would roll into these various programs. So back to our website, you would go into the educational module um, page and you would see a drop down menu that shows the various modules that are currently available. And you'll note here, all six of the ones that I noticed, the food safety, irrigation water microbial testing, the educational resistance management, um, risk assessment, scouting and soil fertilization, You'll also note that once you complete a module, your training record is maintained on the website so that you can go back to that and print the certificate of completion as needed. It also notes that the expiration date. So these modules are, are um, the self-assessments are designed to be annual and updated on a yearly basis. So your certificate will have an expiration date of 12 months after you complete it. Each of the focus areas has its own page. And on this page, you'll see some additional discussion of that particular area of focus, as well as the option to go ahead and start the training module on that particular topic. So talking first about the food safety module, this one was developed in response to increasing customer requests for food safety checklists, especially during harvest. Uh, we we're hearing from some growers that we're getting up to 12 or more audits and, um, and food safety checklists that they were being asked to complete during the harvest window. So we tried to work with merchant processors and brewers to consolidate those various checklists and reduce the number of individual um, pieces of paper that our growers were needing to deal with during the annual harvest. This does generate a certificate of completion that can be supplied to customers the annual assessment should be completed um, to track your continuous improvement efforts, and it is your first step toward third-party certification. This does fit any size farm. This is an example of what the food safety certificate of completion looks like. You'll see on the front side of it, and, and this is my, my little home ranch that I did this for just to make sure I had something I could show you. But you'll see that I've, you've got your food safety contact, your primary contact, and the validity date of this particular certificate. Um, obviously, I need to update mine because mine's been expired for now from, for a little over a year. 
But on the back side of the food safety module certificate of completion, there's a complete summary of all of the different items that were on the checklist that the user has, has implemented their programs to address. And this is important so that your customers can see exactly what was included in this self-assessment. A quick note on the water testing module. Uh, irrigation and other on-farm use of water is commonly identified as a point of contamination risk for agricultural products. Increased regulations and customer expectations surrounding food safety and irrigation water quality helped to drive the creation of this. Uh, efforts ongoing at FDA uh, to move hops to the rarely consumed raw list and eliminate the FISMA Food Safety Modernization Act requirements are still underway, but we're temporarily in that um, in that space of not being subject to FISMA due to an enforcement discretion document. Hopefully within the next year, we will have hops formally moved to the rarely consumed raw list, but growers of all crops are not yet 100% exempt from ensuring that the water used for irrigation and harvesting meets FISMA microbial standard limits. So this particular water testing module will help a grower to make sure that they're addressing that requirement. We are fortunate that the majority of US hops are grown using drip irrigation, which does limit that risk of contamination. We do have the two new integrated pest management modules, one addressing scouting and one addressing resistance management that were uh, completed in 2020 and launched on the website. So those are good training tools for farming operations as well as the soil fertility module, which also focuses on education and is a training tool. This takes us to risk assessment. We've developed several risk assessment tools and I was really quite um, enthused about the presentation yesterday on the worker safety issues by Aaron Miller. And so I actually borrowed a couple of his slides, screenshot a couple of his slides and inserted them into this presentation. But why should we assess risks? And I was impressed by the quote from his, his uh, presentation, you must own everything in your world. There, there is no one else to blame. One of his other slides talked about different types of hazards and on that list was physical, chemical, and biological. And I just want to have you all kind of keep that in mind as we move into the next couple of slides and take a look at how our risk assessment program addresses those. So first of all, we have our risk assessment module. And this was developed on HACCP principles. It's ISO 31000 risk management standard. Again, biological, chemical, and physical risks are assessed. It's the foundation for building a food safety plan specific for a farm, and it is key in the development and implementation of policies and standard operating procedures. This is your first step in moving toward a third party certification. Again, it fits any size of a farm. And this is just a quick little look at how this risk assessment module is set up. It does address um, different areas of risk assessment, including agricultural sites, irrigation water, harvest hygiene, food defense, and, and reports. It is a guidance tool, not an official food safety or HACCP training or documentation for food safety certif certification. Um, but as each farm and business is unique, every risk assessment will hold different levels of risks and preventative controls. This particular module takes the information that you enter and it will set you up with a grid for your low priority, medium priority, and high priority potential risks, giving you the opportunity to put your focus on addressing those in the, the high priority categories. Once you've entered your information, it will generate a report like that shown on the screen, which again, identifies your low, medium, and high risks, and gives you the opportunity to um, specifically look at those things that might need the most of your attention in the coming year. It also identifies your responsible party and starts to set up some check dates on when you are committing to address those risks. Additional good binds assets have been developed to help our members, including templates and plan outlines and some case studies. Um, 
the risk assessment theme continues with some of the templates that have been developed. The first being an allergen risk assessment, uh, and then a HACCP plan, and then our COVID-19 on-farm plan. So taking a quick look first at the allergen risk assessment, this is a pre-filled out risk assessment. This already takes into effect or, or into account the common procedures on U.S. hop farms, the, the commonly used um, materials that are in standard harvesting and handling practices in the U.S. So if you have a customer that is asking for a allergen risk assessment, this can simply be printed out and submitted. If you are a farm that's doing something different than the standard procedures, you should review this, however, and you may need to do some changing in the responses on this based on the things that you are doing that would be different than standard procedures. The next is our HACCP plan. Uh, this was the big lift for 2020, or one of the big lifts for 2020. Um, our contractor, Carmen McKinney, put this together and worked with the subcommittee of our best practices committee to evaluate this in great detail. A little introduction to HACCP, a hazard analysis critical control point, or HACCP, is a system which gives a proactive common sense application to the safety management of our food products. HACCP is a systematic scientific approach to the identification, evaluation, and control of food safety hazards, and then some of the benefits of such a, of such a program. There are several sheets within our HACCP template that look like this. This is your risk analysis, and it breaks down the different process steps or ingredients that are involved in producing hops in the U.S. This particular one starts with fertilizer and plant protection products. Then the risk type, biological, chemical, and physical are evaluated. Is it a risk in those categories or is it not? Identifies the potential hazard, the likelihood, severity, and significance of those potential hazards, the reason for their significance, and then your preventative measures. So there are several of these that break down the entire production and harvesting process that you can then use to fill in your own responses and develop your HACCP plan. Of course, staying with the theme of 2020 was an interesting one. We worked with, um, with one of our Washington farms, uh, Nancy Rodriguez from Roy Farms developed a very in, uh, involved COVID-19 on-farm monitoring plan. This is the table of contents. And she was willing to share that with us so that we could share it out with the entire industry. So this, I think many of you may have utilized during the year. It is still available on our website should you need additional uh, resources to continue with COVID um, monitoring in the coming year. And we appreciate Nancy and Roy Farms for allowing us to work with this plan this year. This year we started developing some case studies and this was done with a grant from Anheuser-Busch that uh, allowed the preparation and production of these. Our first one that was launched this year is an irrigation case study, which featured Virgil Gamash Farms in Toppenish, Washington. This one looks at both water quantity and quality management. And uh, this one was produced in two formats, both as a video as well as a two-page PDF. Those are both available on the website. We have a second one in preparation right now that will look at the development of the COVID-19 on-farm plan by Roy Farms, and that one should be launched in the near future. Also in Goodbines, you find other resources. Each focus area of our Goodbines platform has a collection of resources and programs offered by other agencies and organizations, additional education tools, and we're trying to develop this as a way to allow our growers to have a bit of a one-stop shop to find details on other programs. So just as an example, this is the other resources section of the food safety page. So you can see we've listed a number of different programs that are offered by different organizations in, um, that, that address that particular topic. Our best practices directory is on the public facing side of the website. It's a, uh, something that growers will decide whether they want to list their farms. You self-certify the programs that you have implemented, and this was created with a grant from the Brewers Association. 
So once you're in your My Account page on the website, you can select that you want to do a listing in the best practices directory, fill in the necessary information. You self-certify the programs that you have completed or are participating in, and this needs to be reviewed annually to make sure that these are still, um, these have not expired, and update your entry. And then this is populated over on the best practices directory, which is under the Hop Finder section of the website. And you can see here at the bottom, a couple of our farms who have listed themselves and then the little icons for the various programs that they subscribe to. Future focus of this program, development of additional modules. We just launched this week, the Good Binds Biannual newsletter that'll go out twice a year to really focus on best practices issues. We hope to implement more webinars and case studies as well as some field days once COVID allows us to gather again. And then for 2021, our project that we hope to pursue if we can collect enough funding is a life cycle assessment or carbon footprint evaluation for hop production and processing. So, Anne, Are there any just, questions? Oh, that's perfect timing. I was just gonna say there's uh, about five minutes left. So if folks have questions, um, a reminder to um, put them in the Q&A box. Um, and maybe one, uh, since we're not getting any questions yet, maybe one thing um, you could uh, kind of go over is how you um, decide to prioritize what um, these projects, um, what these modules focus on and how you've kind of selected um, what your priorities are with this um, program. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. The very first module that we did was food safety. And, and that one was, as I noted, in response to the fact that we were getting a number of companies, customers, be it brewers or, or um, merchant companies that were asking our growers to do checklists or to do other um, forms be it second party audits or whatever it might be to document their food safety practices. So that one was an easy first choice. And in fact, the board felt that one was so important that it's not only available as a module for our members, but it's also available in a PDF static format on the public side of the website for anybody in the world to access. And then as we moved forward, that was the committee's job was to look at sort of what's available out there and, and what would be good areas to concentrate on. Okay, well, it looks like, um, oh, here we go. We've got one question here. Um, so from Ryan Hammer, he asks, well, this is not specifically about good vines. I was wanting to know what the protocol is for being listed under the merchant contact section of the hop finder tab. Oh, um, actually I can answer that question. <laughs> so uh, Ryan, that's part of actually our promotions program. Farms can yes, uh, promote uh, their, their farms um, through uh, that, that part of the website that Anne previously mentioned. Um, but in the hop finder section, um, we send out an announcement every year um, in hop news to any merchants that would like to be listed. Um, we do that through the promotions program. Um, so I'm gonna put my email um, in the chat and we can connect afterwards about um, getting, uh, getting you listed online. Okay, well with that, um, okay. I think we're right, right on the Dot Ann, um, did you want to introduce our, our next speaker?